This is on the morning of February 6. Thousands of people watch a bright green meteor light up the sky and then plunge into Lake Michigan. Over 500 reports from Wisconsin to Kentucky were submitted to the American Meteor Society. The AMS says this is the 14th largest meteor sighting they have recorded since beginning their work in 2005. Of course, that color is when it's burning up, interacting with the atmosphere. Awesome sight. Joining us live to talk about this from the American Meteor Society. I always want to say Meteorological I know, Society because that's that us. Uh, is Mike Hankey. Mike, thanks for joining us this morning. So how do you go about tracking a meteor? Well, um, what we do now is um, a lot better than what people did, say, 50 years ago or even 20 years ago. Um, the, you know, the manual way to do it would be to talk in person with all the people or at least, you know, enough people that saw it and measure where they saw it in the sky in terms of, like, you know, the direction, like north, south, east, west and how high or low it was in the sky. And then using geometry and triangulation, you can determine the start and end point of the meteor and then go from there. Um, with the internet and the application that we've built, we've you know enabled people to be able to do this all online using the Google Map interface, and they place their self on the map where they were, and then they point on the map where they saw the you know the fireball mm -hmm. start. And yeah. And speaking of, you, you call it a fireball, and that's kind of a big misconception is people think they're hot. It, but isn't a meteor just ice and rock and, you know, that it's, type it's of... It's burning uh, up as it's coming through yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, in that moment, it's extremely hot, right. you know, thousands of degrees hot. Um, but the, the rock itself or the, the, the mass itself um, is, isn't hot. It's not burning. It's the air that's around it that's uh, been ionized and, and looks like it's on fire. But it's really just light that's... Um, ionizing the air around it from the friction. Oh, wow. But the so, name fireball is just a, you know, it's an astronomical name for a bright meteor. So Mike, let's go back to, you know, how you're triangulating and finding these things. Do you ever go to the places where you think they may have landed and, and found pieces of meteor? And, and what is a unique story? Yeah. Like, did it go through somebody's roof or somebody's doghouse? I mean, do you anything like that? I mean, that's, that's happened for sure. Uh, personally, the best you know, event I had was last year in Florida, right around this same time, and it was a daytime fireball that landed in essentially a swamp in central North Florida. And it was very much like the Michigan event in that it showed up on the Doppler weather radar, the same radar yeah. that you guys show all day long. Meteorites will actually show up on that Doppler radar sometimes as they're falling through the sky. And when that happens, it's just like, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but you have to go. And the right. meteorites generally right underneath of where the radar returns are. And I wouldn't say it's easy to find. You still have yeah. to put dates okay. into it, but you know exactly where to look. So did it really take out the dinosaurs and make the Bay of Campeche? Uh, it did take out the dinosaurs. <laughs> Good. There you go. Great question, Amber. How to end it on a, on a positive note here. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate that. Uh, thanks for talking to us.